gonna head back to my old testing ground and I'm gonna ride the Glentress Black Route as fast as I can. See if I'm ready for nationals. Go, go, go! Old enough to know better. I guess it's a bit of a joke. I'm 36, should I really still be playing on my bike? <laughs> should I have not have grown up by now? You know, I am old enough to know better. I've never been this fit and I've never been this well trained. I want to go and prove it. You know, how do I measure up in a real bike race? It'd be good to line up and, and see how I measure up against the best riders in, in Britain. Yeah, when you look at Scotland, it's, 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 yeah. It kind of outperforms what you expect it should do as a nation. So much talent, you know, world titles, rainbow bands, and then you've got amazing organizations and athletes and events. And it's for such a small country, you know, we punch above our weight purely down to the passion. The reason we see so many good quality mountain bikers and, and it's such a popular activity and sport is purely down to the investment 20 years ago. It's not a coincidence that the best riders in Scotland live close to Tweed Valley or Nevis Range, Fort William. It's taught by doing from a young age and it's just so simple. Without the facilities, there's, there isn't a sport. That's why I think Glen Tress is absolutely pivotal. The most important mountain biking spot around here, most of our riding, the initial development came from Glen Tress. <laughs> from my understanding, after foot and mouth, there was a, a kind of deliberate effort to kind of get people back out into rural areas. And Glen Tress has to be like the, the flagship destination and you know, the big success story out of that. Jumps and black trail and red trail and just, yeah, game changer. First time I went to Glen Tress was early 2000s. There was no cafe, there wasn't even a road. For mountain biking in, in the UK, I would say it was, it was a big, big step. And the fact that it began to evolve over time and was continually invested in what actually became the seven stains, the, you know, the seven trail centres across the borders of Scotland. That investment was absolutely pivotal to, to British mountain biking, to Scottish mountain biking, accessible to a lot of people. And from that moment on, everything was measured by Glentress. It's very cool. What a place. Teenage kicks at Glentress. What a place. This is where everyone learned to jump. You learned to jump here. Reese learned to jump here. How many people have you taught? Oh, thousands. Just the first jumps. <laughs> <laughs> the first jumps in Scotland that weren't like sketchy doubles. If you start mountain biking, this is where you come to ride. 90% of mountain bikers in Scotland's first ride was at Glen Tress, right? Yeah, this is, the, this is the place that gets people hooked in. And then before you know it, it's 21 years later and you're still flipping doing it. And I used to come here every week, maybe twice a week ride a lap of the red, just as fast as we could, like just rip up, rip back down. And then as soon as the black route opened, it was like, no more red route. We don't care about the red route. Let's go ride the black route. You know, if you're training for XC and you want to come and like check, it's like you check your form here, see how, how fit you are. You go rip a lap of the black. It's always a good tester. Climbs up, descends, up, descends, up, descends. It kind of, it's almost like an XC race. When I first started riding, like if you broke two hours, it was like to be celebrated. It's recommended to take three to five hours. And my KOM, which I set in 2014, is 122.54 KOM, personal record. But the bike's better. I think I'm better. I, I set the 122 in 2014, which is the last year I did the World Cup. Yeah, it'd be a good test. See where I'm at. See if I'm ready for nationals. It's great to track power outputs and fitness and fitness tests on the indoor trainer. But as you're beginning to transfer that fitness to sport and, and the event that you're targeting, it's great to have a more specific field test, like riding the Glentress Black Route as fast as possible. Focusing on something that you can actually improve. If you're not focusing on the outcome, what are you focusing on? Six pumps front, eight pumps back. Probably going a bit over the top. I've got 18 in the front, I'm going to go 20 in the rear. <sighs> ready? I'm ready. I'm press the start button.
rode it, it felt like such an adventure. The black really did that. It feels so remote, it feels like you're miles away. Even though you're only ever really an hour to, to roll back down to the cafe. It's, it does a brilliant job of being like a purpose-built mountain bike trail, but feeling like you're on a total adventure, like it feels like you could be anywhere. It's really easy to say you're gonna do something, actually doing it's a lot harder, isn't it? Yeah, I was pretty nervous going out into it and you've got to trust the process, you've just got to execute what it is you're trying to do and it's a great way to kind of monitor progression. If you've got a route like that, you can start to see the time coming down. The highest point on the hill, like Dunstler Heights where the mast is. <laughs> I think I was like about 30 seconds ahead at the mast. When I did my last hit out in 2014, the route just went straight down the gravel road. You hit that so fast and just carry all that speed all the way along to the corner. And then 2015, Carl's Lane was built, it meanders and weaves through the trees. But as I was riding it, I was thinking, I didn't do this last time. Definitely added a little bit of time. It's literally a made up uh, competition, right? There's nothing riding on it. I just made this idea up myself, but still freaking out, being like, oh, what if I don't do it? Good style. Oh. How was it? Good. I said I've got 14 meters still. Go. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. Yo, so. Alright, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I did it. <laughs> tight. I didn't think I was going to do it. Yeah, it was a good crack. Pretty spicy like, that's five chilies right there. Yeah, good numbers. Pretty juicy like. Yeah, that was hard. Good though. The way the bikes have developed over the years. You know, the suspension's so much better, frame design's better, geometry's better, tires are better. I'm as good, if not slightly better. I think technically I'm better, yeah, for sure. It's hard, eh, because you're like doing, try to do maths mm. when you're breathing out your flipping eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a few, yeah, there's some people about, but try not be rude. Say please and thank you. <laughs> right, Slater! <laughs> I'm going for Strava! <laughs> Strava! <laughs> I'm really happy, actually, to do that in hour 20. 10 minutes faster than the old dream benchmark. Pretty happy. The main reason I do these things is I enjoy it. It's, it's fun to set a challenge that you don't know if you're capable of achieving and then seeing what you can do. I take a lot of enjoyment from it. I find it really satisfying and fun. Unless you enjoy it and you relax, then what's the point? It's finding that nice balance, really. And sometimes when you see youngsters out on pure road climbs or gravel roads doing these intervals, they think that that's what they have to do. And it's, it's kind of horrible and it can be soul destroying and it can make you, if you don't enjoy it, some people love it and that's fine. But if you don't love it, it doesn't matter. There's a way of disguising it into your training and you know, you can make the efforts work for you and make you happy and make you enjoy them. Uh, it shouldn't only just be painful. Disguise the pain. It's a hard sport. It's there's no getting away from it. It's a tough sport, and Rab's gained a huge amount of experience from his coaching and, and training other people, I think, and yeah. his own experience. Yeah. And it's great that he's motivated to apply that to himself at the minute. He's he's a very capable rider, and I think he just sort of got bored too easily, you know. Do it because it makes your brain better. Kettle say, can you do a backflip? 
They just ask you if you can do a front flip next. Oh my god! Oh, incredible! Oh, Jesus. Free ride, baby. Funny nickname for this place is the Danger Zone. The box jump at the bottom. I think, you know, 90% of mountain bikers started mountain biking here. I think 90% of the accidents at Glentress happen on that box. Unfortunately, there's a, yeah, there's an ambulance called there pretty regularly, but uh, that's why it's called the Danger Zone. The Danger Zone.